airstrike by the United States military has killed a high-profile commander of Iran's secretive Quds Force. The U.S. Department of Defense said in a statement announcing the death of Qasim Soleimani. At the direction of the President, the U.S. military has taken decisive defensive action to protect U.S. personnel abroad. Soleimani was an iconic military commander of Iran's military forces in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and throughout the Middle East. This move could escalate already simmering tensions between the U.S. and Iran and lead to an all-out war. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Iran won't be able to sustain a war against the United States. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Iranian Navy has about 400 vessels. Though the quantity may not seem bad, the quality leaves a lot to be desired. Iranian Navy is considered a brown water navy and operates mainly within the 50 kilometer or 31 miles exclusion zone. A large percentage of the fleet is made up of small patrol vehicles, apart from which there's a small submarines force, some frigates, and a few corvettes. Most of these are designed to block the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz is a strait between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. It provides the only sea passage from the Persian Gulf to the open ocean. It's one of the world's most strategically important sea routes. Around 33% of the world's liquefied natural gas and almost 20% of total global oil production passes through it. At its narrowest, the strait has a width of only 21 nautical miles, or 39 kilometers. Because of its narrow width, it's kind of a choke point. The most potent submarines in the fleet is the Russian diesel electric Kilo class, which displaces around 2,325 tons. Iran has three of these. The other submarines are much smaller than these, and none of these submarines are nuclear powered. The submarine force is nowhere close to what the U.S. brings to the table. It has 17 Virginia class, 32 Los Angeles class submarines, three Sea Wolf class attack subs in active service, apart from 18 Ohio class ballistic missile submarines. All of these are nuclear powered and have a displacement in upwards of 6,000 tons and technologically far superior. Iran neither has a destroyer nor an aircraft carrier. There are six frigates and three corvettes. The most powerful of these is the Sahard class that displaces around 2,000 tons. These are no match to the advanced U.S. surface combatants. America has 66 Arleigh Burke class destroyers and 22 Ticonderoga class cruisers in active service. These displace more than 8,000 tons and are multi role warships capable of anti aircraft warfare, AAW, anti submarine warfare, ASW, anti surface warfare, ASUW, and ballistic missile defense, BMD. Though Iran could harass commercial vessels in the Strait of Hormuz, confronting a U.S. Navy flotilla is beyond its capacity. The U.S. Navy is expected to dominate and should be able to impose a naval blockade. On paper, the Iranian Air Force possesses more than 300 combat-capable aircraft but all of them are either third-generation or fourth-generation ones. There are around 190 fighter aircraft, such as U.S.-made Northrop F-5s, F-4 Phantom II, Grumman F-14, and Russian-made Sukhoi Su-22, Sukhoi Su-24, and MiG-29. The MiG-29 is the most modern fighter, and Iran operates approximately only 25 of these. The air-to-air -air missiles equipping fighters 
are far older in technology compared with what the U.S. possesses. F-22 Raptor and F-35 Joint Strike Fighter are a generation ahead of MiG-29 and are stealthy. In this scenario, the Iranian pilots will find it very difficult to detect and target them. Iran has several types of air defense systems that include indigenous ones as well as ones of foreign origin. It's recently showcased homegrown Kordad 15, which is thought to be far more advanced than the previous Kordad 3. Apart from these, Iran also has several batteries of Russian made S 300. But as proven by Israeli airstrikes in Syria, the air defenses could be evaded, especially when you have stealth fighters like F 22 and F 35, and bombers like B 2 Spirit. Once these air defenses are taken out, even the U.S. carrier-based F-A-18 Super Hornets are more than enough for the Iranian Air Force. The U.S., with far sophisticated fighters, coupled with way better pilot training and aerial strategy, is expected to quickly get air superiority over Iranian skies. Iran has 525,000 active personnel. And around 350,000 in reserves. Iran's military reportedly has 1,600 tanks. This includes some 100 locally produced Zulfikar, about 100 very old British made Chieftain, and 200 US made M60 Patton, as well as around 1,000 T 72 tanks of different variants. Technically, T 72 is the best of the lot. Viewers may note that in the 1991 Gulf War and in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq, the T-72s were quickly swept aside by American M1 Abrams and British Challenger II. Tehran also is thought to possess around 2,300 armored fighting vehicles, around 550 self-propelled artillery, around 2,150 towed artillery pieces, and approximately 2,000 rocket projectors. While the equipment is available in decent numbers, almost all of these are technically far less competent when compared to American counterparts. A ground invasion will be bloody, but American forces will be able to make quick inroads. Iran has approximately 1,000 strategic missiles that are controlled by the Revolutionary Guard. It consists of 300 short-range ballistic missiles including Iranian-made Shahab-1, Scud-B, Shahab-2, Scud-C, as well as Tandar-69, CSS-8. It also has domestically produced Shahab-3 Strategic Intermediate Range Ballistic Missiles IRBM, with a reported range of up to 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles, the Ghadir-1 with an estimated 1,600 kilometers or 995 miles range, and a Shahab 3 variant known as Sajil 2 with a reported range of up to 2,400 kilometers or 1,490 miles. These can't reach the American mainland, but these do represent a significant threat for American allies like Israel. But the reliability of these missiles are suspect. None have nuclear warheads and all of them are land-based, which makes them inherently vulnerable to a preemptive strike. A diverse array of surfaced-to-air missiles are deployed to protect these sites, but none have the capability to detect, track, and engage American stealth aircraft like B-2 Spirit and F-22 Raptor. The U.S. is expected to quickly neutralize these sites with air and sea-launched precision strikes. Iran's nuclear deal involved the United Kingdom, Russia, France, China, Germany, and the European Union, apart from the U.S. and Iran. None of these stakeholders have favored the unilateral withdrawal of the U.S. from the deal. But if the U.S. pursues any military action against Iran, there won't be a major pushback apart from diplomatic saber-rattling. If we look from Iran's perspective, it's most likely that these stakeholders will be bystanders at the very best or even support the U.S. in worst case. It's been seen that NATO as a whole has been able to keep aside the differences in the past and there's no possibility of it actively opposing the U.S. In this situation, it can be said that Iran will not find any ally 
which will genuinely support it in case a conflict gets started. Furthermore, it may have to face aggressive maneuvers from Israel and Saudi Arabia. Iran and Israel have been longtime rivals, and several incidents during the current Syrian civil war has strained relations further. Iran and Saudi Arabia have no diplomatic relations since an attack on the Saudi embassy in Tehran in January 2016, and their relations have deteriorated further after the attack on Saudi Arabia's oil company Aramco. A war effort requires massive reserves, not only in men but also in material. American annual military budget is around 50 times that of Iran. Napoleon is known to have said an army marches on its stomach. In August of 2018, the Trump administration slapped sanctions on Iran, which has adversely affected the economy. The sanctions have been expanded to include a ban on Iran's oil exports, which is its major source of foreign revenue inflow. More than 150 foreign corporations have stopped doing business with Iran, and many countries like India and Japan have reduced oil imports and may eventually stop buying completely. The financial squeeze has resulted in a severe crunch, and the economy shrank by as much as 3.9 percent in 2017-2018. Recently, President Hassan Rouhani stated that U.S. sanctions have cost the country $200 billion. Keeping this in view, it will not be possible for Iran to fight a sustained war against the most well-funded and technologically advanced military in the world. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.